स्प्लाइड हैज टू फिगर्स फर्स्ट फिगर इज ऑफ हिप डिस्प्लाजिया और कंजेनाइटल डिसलोकेशन ऑफ द हिप जॉइंट एंड सेकेंड फिगर शोज पोस्टीरियर डिसलोकेशन ऑफ द हिप जॉइंट सो कमिंग टू द फर्स्ट फिगर इट इज ऑफ हिप डिसप्लाजिया और कंजेनाइटल डिसलोकेशन सो द कंजेनाइटल डिसलोकेशन ऑफ हिप जॉइंट इज मोर कॉमन इन फीमेल्स एंड इन फिफ्टी परसेंट केसेज इट इज बायोलेट्रल इट ऑकर्स वेन द आर्टिक्युलर कैप्सूल ऑफ द हिप जॉइंट इज लूज एट बर्थ और वेन देर इज हाइपोप्लाजिया ऑफ द एसिटाबिलम एंड फेमोरल हेड डिसलोकेशन ऑकर्स वेन द फेमोरल हेड इज नॉट प्रॉपरली लोकेटेड इन द एसिटाबिलम देर इज इनेबिलिटी टू एबडक द थाय एंड इन एडिशन द अफेक्टेड लिम अपियर शॉर्टर बिकॉज द डिसलोकेटेड फेमोरल हेड इज सुपीरियर एंड यर द ट्रेंडलबर्ग साइन इज ऑल्सो पॉजिटिव देन द सेकेंड फिगर इज ऑफ अक्वायर्ड डिसलोकेशन ऑफ द हिप जॉइंट Uh, and it shows posterior dislocation so posterior dislocation is most common now when the dislocation occurs due to accidents when the hip joint is least stable in flexed adducted and medially rotated position here the posterior dislocation may occur and the knee uh, may strike and it uh, may cause dislocation of the hip when the femoral head is forced out of the acetabulum here the joint capsule ruptures inferiorly and posteriorly and it allows the femoral head to uh, pass to the tear in capsule over the posterior margin of the acetabulum and in case of posterior dislocation sciatic nerve is most commonly injured due to stretching or compression and uh, in posterior dislocation or fracture uh, when there is injury to the sciatic nerve it causes paralysis of hamstrings and the muscles distal to the knee joint supplied by sciatic nerve sensory changes may also occur in the skin over the posterior lateral aspect of the leg and uh, over the foot because injury to sensory branches of sciatic nerve occurs then anterior dislocation may result from violent injury that forces the hip into extension abduction and lateral rotation in this condition the femoral head is inferior to the acetabulum and it again may occur with fracture uh, and when the femoral head is dislocated it usually carries the acetabular bone fragment or uh, acetabular labrum along with it hip replacement is also known as hip arthroplasty it is a surgical uh, process by which we can replace the parts of hip joint with artificial implants the hip joint normally consists of ball formed by head of femur and socket formed by acetabulum of the hip joint in hip replacement surgery there is replacement of one or both the parts of the bone and the goal is to allow or to resume daily activities with less less pain it is indicated in patients with osteoarthritis rheumatoid arthritis osteonecrosis injury such as hip fracture or tumor in the hip joint in such condition there is disability in the patient uh, due to severe pain the patient does not have restful sleep in the night there is difficulty in doing simple task such as climbing stair or doing routine activity so the hip replacement is of two types and uh, first is total hip replacement or total hip arthroplasty in which both ball and socket are replaced and in case of partial hip replacement only the ball or head of the femur is replaced by artificial prosthesis upper end of the femur has peculiar feature of having secondary ossification center before 9 months of intrauterine life it provides information regarding maturity of the fetus hence uh, it is of medico legal importance 
because its appearance in radiograph indicates that the newborn baby was found dead uh, when the newborn baby was dead it was full term and it was viable the law of ossification says that the end of growing long bone where the ossification center will appear first will unite last with the diaphysis and the end which lies opposite to the direction of nutrient artery is usually the growing end meaning it will unite last with the diaphysis in fibula the upper end is growing end so the ossification center should appear first here but actually the ossification center uh, first appears in the lower end and the lower end unites first with the diaphysis and because the lower end has pressure epiphysis and upper end has traction epiphysis the ossification center appears earlier in pressure epiphysis thus the lower end of fibula ha has violates the law of ossification the fibula bone violates the law of ossification and whereas the lower end of the femur has got medico legal significance in the neck of femur is more common in old age frequently seen in women and a vascular necrosis of the head femur is more common in intracapsular fractures of the neck than in extracapsular fractures of the neck femur so normally in adult young adult there is a plate of compact bone known as calcare femoral it extends from linea aspera to posterior inferior part of neck of femur and it provides strength to the neck of the femur as the age advances the calcare femoral degenerates due to osteoporosis and therefore uh, any indirect trauma or fall in a person above the age of 60 years results in fracture of neck femur the fracture is um, again more common in females older females than in males because in females there is post menopausal osteoporosis caused by estrogen deficiency and the neck shaft angle is also more in case of females then the avascular necrosis of the head femur is more common uh, in intracapsular fractures for this we should know the blood supply of the femur head it is mainly supplied by three arteries nutrient artery reticular artery and artery of the head of femur nutrient artery travels from diaphysis along the cancellous bone retinacular artery is the main artery it uh, supplies or it travels in the retinacula of the capsule of the hip joint deep to the synovial membrane and its distal attachment at its distal attachment the capsule is reflected on the neck in longitudinal bands called retinacula and the third artery is artery of the head of femur it travels along the ligamentum teres of the head so uh, the retinacular artery plays key role in providing nutrition to the head and neck of the femur and if this artery is injured or involved then uh, the intracapsular part will be affected therefore uh, if there is intracapsular fracture there will be involvement of retinacular artery and thus a vascular necrosis of the head is more common and uh, grossly we classify the fracture of the upper end of femur into four types subcapital that is a fracture neck just beneath the head as shown in first figure then trans cervical the neck breaks at midpoint basal means the neck breaks adjacent to the trochanter and intertrochanteric or pertrochanteric means the fracture line passes between the uh, along or just distal to the trochanters so these are four types of fracture 
of upper end of the femur now nearer the fracture to the head more is the uh, chance of injury to the retinacular blood vessel and thus uh, it will cause um, or the frequency of a vascular necrosis of the head will be more the neck of femur is inclined at an angle with the shaft and the angle is about 160 degree in young child and 125 degree in adults an increase in the angle is known as coxa vulga and it occurs uh, in case of congenital dislocation of hip in this condition adduction of hip joint is limited then the second condition is coxa vera decrease in the neck shaft angle is known as coxa vera it occurs in uh, fracture of neck femur and in slipping of the femoral epiphysis in this condition abduction of the hip joint is limited then the shelton's line is useful means of assessing the angle of uh, femoral neck on radiograph of the hip joint the femur is placed diagonally within the thigh whereas tibia is almost vertical within the leg and it creates an angle at the knee between the long axis of these two bones the angle between these two bones is referred clinically as q angle and it is assessed by drawing a line from anterior superiliac spine to the middle of patella and extrapolating a second vertical line that passes through middle of patella and tibial tuberosity the q angle is typically greater in females adult females owing to wider pelvis a medial angulation of leg in relation to the thigh in which the femur is abnormally vertical and the q angle is small is known as genu varum or bow leg that causes unequal weight bearing the line of weight bearing falls medial to the center of the knee and excess pressure is placed on the medial aspect of the knee joint which results in arthrosis that is destruction of the knee cartilage and fibular collateral ligament is also overstressed and lateral angulation of the leg that is large q angle q angle more than 17 degree is in relation with the thigh that is exaggeration of the knee angle it is known as genu vulgum or knock knee because of exaggerated knee angle in genu vulgum the weight bearing line falls lateral to the center of the knee and the tibial collateral ligament is overstretched and there is excess stress on the lateral meniscus and cartilage of lateral femoral and tibial condyle the patella is normally pulled laterally by the tendon of vastus lateralis um, is now pulled even further laterally when the leg is extended in the presence of genu vulgum so that uh, its articulation with the femur is also abnormal so mostly it occurs in degenerative joint changes such as osteoarthritis the abdominal aorta divides into internal and external iliac artery the external iliac artery continues as femoral artery at mid inguinal point the femoral artery proximal to its branches in the upper one third of the thigh is most superficial easily accessible and is used for some clinical procedures like compression cannulation so the femoral artery can be compressed at mid inguinal point against the head of femur mid inguinal point is the midpoint between pubic symphysis and anterior superior iliac spine the pulsations of the femoral artery can also be felt at mid inguinal point and its significance is that if the pulsations are absent or if they are feeble then it indicates coarctation of aorta 
and uh, the femoral artery is quite superficial in the femoral triangle so it is also used for ligation that is tying or for cardiac catheterization femoral sheath encloses upper 3 to 4 cm of femoral vessels and this femoral sheath is formed by downward extension of two layers of abdominal fascia anterior wall of the sheath is formed by fascia transversalis and posterior wall by fascia iliaca this femoral sheath is divided into three compartments by septa lateral or arterial compartment has femoral artery and femoral branch of genito femoral nerve intermediate is the venous compartment it has femoral vein and the medial or lymphatic compartment has the lymph nodes of cloquet or rosenmuller so the medial lymphatic compartment is also known as femoral canal the femoral canal is an area of potential weakness in the abdominal wall through which abdominal contents may bulge out forming a femoral hernia a femoral hernia is more common in females because the femoral canal is wide and the blood vessels are smaller in females and the femoral hernia has the neck and sac part it courses downwards and uh, the course of enlarging sac is again typical first it passes downwards through femoral canal then forwards through saphenous opening and then upwards along with the superficial epigastric vessels in case of strangulation the femoral hernia needs to be reduced so it is done by cutting the lacunar ligament which forms medial boundary of the femoral canal normally it is done uh, means if the, uh, if the abnormal obturator artery is present medially then we have to take care while cutting lacunar ligament the abnormal obturator artery is formed by anastomosis of pubic branch of inferior epigastric artery and the obturator artery itself normally the obturator artery is branch of internal iliac and it gives pubic branch which anastomosis with the pubic branch of inferior epigastric artery but if the anastomosis is very large then the anastomotic artery itself appears as obturator artery and we have to take care not to injure this abnormal obturator artery while cutting the lacunar ligament sciatic nerve injury may occur due to posterior dislocation of the hip or fracture of pelvis or due to some penetrating wounds here in sciatic nerve injury all the muscles of posterior compartment of the thigh that is hamstring muscles are paralyzed it results in inability to extend the hip joint and flex the knee joint due to paralysis of the muscles of leg and foot there is loss of uh, the dorsiflexion at the foot so it results in foot drop then uh, due to involvement of cutaneous nerves or the branches derived from tibial and common peroneal nerve there will be sensory loss along the back of thigh whole of the leg foot except the area which is innervated by the saphenous nerve sometimes there is sciatica it is shooting pain along the course and distribution of sciatic nerve uh, mainly in the lateral aspect of the leg dorsum of the foot it results from compression of l4 to s3 spinal nerve roots due to herniation of uh, the intervertebral disc in case of foot drop the there is paralysis of all the muscles that cause dorsiflexion and eversion it is either due to injury to the common peroneal nerve at the neck of fibula or injury to the sciatic nerve in gluteal region in the next figure we can see saphenous nerve injury mostly the saphenous nerve accompanies great saphenous vein in the leg and uh, while ligating the great saphenous vein during surgical closure of the wound the saphenous nerve may get trapped along the ligature and thus there will be pain tingling 
sensation numbness along the area distributed by saphenous nerve that is medial border of the foot major muscle arises from the transverse process of all lumbar vertebrae and from the side of the body is an intervening disc of T12 to L5 vertebrae so it passes uh, downwards and it becomes a tendon which crosses beneath the inguinal ligament and it enters into the floor of femoral triangle and finally it is inserted at the tip of lesser trochanter of the femur the sos major muscle is enclosed in a facial sheath which is derived from lumbar fascia and the sheath is open above and it communicates with the posterior mediastinum so the pus from tuberculous thoracic vertebrae enter uh, into the sos sheath and then it tracks down along the sos muscle into the femoral triangle and if it is not treated or in case of neglected cases the pus tracks along the femoral vessels into the subsartorial canal and eventually it appears in the popliteal fossa so its treatment is drainage and antibiotics intra muscular injections are given in upper and outer quadrant of the gluteal region so that sciatic nerve is not injured the patient is asked to fully extend the gluteal region so that uh, in prone position it extends upwards to the iliac crest and outwards to the greater trochanter the exact site for injection is place the base of non dominant hand over the greater trochanter of the patient's hip with thumb pointing towards the groin and fingers towards the iliac crest now place the index finger over anterior superior iliac spine and extend middle finger back along the iliac crest towards the buttocks the index finger middle finger and the iliac crest form v shaped triangle the center of the triangle is exact site for injection uh, in spite of these instructions the nurse may uh, inject into the bulge of the buttocks as considering it as the gluteal injection and therefore apparently though the injection is given in upper and outer quadrant it will uh, injure the sciatic nerve so in case of injection palsy or uh, intramuscular injection at the gluteal region it uh, it is the situation where there is loss of movement and lack of sensation at the affected lower extremity with or without pain so the damage to sciatic nerve can produce uh, effects ranging from minor motor sensory abnormalities to complete paralysis and uh, causalgia and excruciating pain and incapacitating pain that is resistant to analgesic treatment in case of complete lesion the motor loss is usually greater than sensory loss normal gait of the pelvis depends on proper abductor mechanism of both right and left hip and this abductor mechanism involves adequate power provided by gluteus medius and minimus and tensor fascia lata then the fulcrum formed by normal relation of head of femur and acetabulum and third component is proper weight transmission by the head and neck of the femur so normally when a person is walking the body weight is supported by one limb the limb which is on the ground will support the body weight and the limb which is off the ground or the unsupported limb is uh, provided support by the abductors of opposite side however if the abductor mechanism is defective then the unsupported side of the pelvis will drop and it results in positive trendelberg sign so the uh, trendelberg sign is positive if there is defect in the power of gluteus medius and minimus and tensor fascia lata muscle due to its 
paralysis and injury to superior gluteal nerve or when there is defect in the fulcrum due to congenital or pathological dislocation of hip or if there is defect in the transmission of body weight through ununited uh, fracture of the neck femur so due to all these causes there will be dropping of the pelvis on unsupported side when the gluteus medius minimus and tensor fascia lata of the right side are paralyzed then the patient cannot have a uh, walk normally he will bend or he will waddle on the right side or the paralyzed side so it if when it is unilateral it is known as lurching gait and when it is uh, when there is bilateral involvement of the abductor uh, then it is known as waddling gait patellar bursitis is caused by friction between skin and patella however the bursa may also be injured by compressive forces resulting from direct blow or uh, falling on flex knee if the inflammation is chronic the bursa becomes distended with fluid and forms swelling anterior to the knee and the condition is known as housemaid's knee in other people who work on their knee without knee pads such as hardwood floor and rug installers they may also develop prepatellar bursitis subcutaneous infrapatellar bursitis is caused by excessive friction between skin and tibial tuberosity edema occurs over the proximal end of the tibia and the condition is known as clergyman's knee when once foot is caught in a hole first the body and tibia will uh, rotate internally while the foot is rigidly held in the hole and this causes torsional spiral fracture of lateral malleolus forceful eversion pulls on extremely strong medial or deltoid ligament and it causes avulsion of deltoid ligament with or without avulsion of medial malleolus if the tibia is then carried forwards the posterior margin of lower end of the tibia is sheared off by talus these stages are termed as first second and third degree of pots fracture and it is also known as trimalleolar fracture meralgia paresthetica is a clinical condition characterized by pain tingling numbness or anesthesia in the area of distribution of lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh that is upper anterolateral aspect of the thigh this nerve is derived from dorsal division of ventral rami of second and third lumbar nerve in the lumbar plexus and it enters the thigh by passing deep to lateral uh, part of inguinal ligament which is occasionally pierced and when the nerve pierces the ligament it may compress with resultant irritation known as meralgia paresthetica so the compression of lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh causes a clinical condition known as meralgia paresthetica paralysis of muscles of anterior compartment of a leg due to injury to deep peroneal nerve results in loss of power of dorsiflexion of the foot and as a result the foot is plantar flexed this condition is known as foot drop this is caused by injury or disease of common peroneal nerve due to trauma or leprosy or due to peripheral neuritis sensory loss is confined to first interdigital space full extension of knee joint as in uh, standing is known as locking of knee joint so there is full or complete extension of knee joint normally the antero posterior diameter of lateral femoral condyle is less than medial condyle so when the lateral condylar articular surface is fully used up by extension a part of medial condylar surface remains unused 
and at this stage the lateral condyle serves as axis uh, around which the medial condyle rotates backwards that is medial rotation of femur occurs and the medial condylar surface is fully occupied the movement when the medial condyle is completely used up the knee joint gets locked so all the ligaments are taut and quadriceps femoris is responsible for locking or full extension of knee joint unlocking is reversal of medial rotation by lateral rotation of femur and it occurs only when flexion can occur and uh, unlocking is brought about by the action of popliteus joint is compound complex bicondylar variety of synovial joint and the strength of knee joint depends on the strength of ligaments that bind the femur to tibia and on the tone of muscles acting on the joint so there are uh, many knee injuries we'll see one by one first the synovial membrane of knee joint is extensive and if articular surfaces menisci or ligaments of the knee joint are damaged then a large synovial cavity becomes distended with fluid and there is wide communication between the suprapatellar bursa and the joint cavity and it results in this structure becoming distended then uh, the ligaments injured in knee joint are mainly there are four ligaments tibial collateral ligament or medial collateral ligament lateral or fibular collateral ligament anterior cruciate ligament and posterior cruciate ligament now uh, the injuries of medial collateral ligament if there is forced abduction of the tibia on femur it can result in partial tearing of tibial collateral ligament which can occur at its femoral or tibial attachment it is useful to remember that the tear of menisci results in localized tenderness of joint whereas sprain of medial collateral ligament results in tenderness over femoral or tibial attachment of the ligament then the second ligament is lateral collateral ligament forced adduction of the tibia on femur can injure the lateral collateral ligament and it is less common compared to medial collateral then the cruciate ligaments injury to cruciate ligament can occur when there is excessive force to the knee joint tear of anterior cruciate ligament is more common than the tear of posterior cruciate and the injury always accompanies damage to the other knee structures like collateral ligament is also torn uh, or the capsule may be damaged and the joint cavity is filled with blood known as hemarthrosis so that joint is swollen examination of the patient with a ruptured anterior cruciate ligament shows that the tibia can be pulled extensively forward on the femur with rupture of posterior cruciate ligament the tibia can uh, can be moved extensively backwards on the femur so these are known as anterior and posterior drawer test respectively because of stability of knee joint largely depends on the tone of quadriceps muscle and integrity of the ligaments operative repair is uh, operative repair of isolated torn cruciate ligament is not attempted first the knee is immobilized in slight flexion in a cast and active physiotherapy is given then coming to the menisci injury injury to the menisci is also very common medial meniscus is damaged more frequently than lateral meniscus and uh, this is probably because of its strong attachment to the medial collateral ligament which restricts mobility and the injury occurs when the femur is rotated on the tibia or tibia is rotated on femur with the knee joint partially flexed and 
taking weight of the body and the tibia is usually abducted on the femur and the medial menisci is pulled into abnormal position between the femoral and tibial condyles and sudden movement between the condyles result in menisci subjected to severe grinding forces that splits the length and when uh, torn apart the menisci becomes wedge shape it is wedged between articular surfaces and further movement is impossible so it is also known as joint lock then coming to lateral menisci injury to the lateral menisci is less common compared to the medial menisci and uh, probably because it is not attached to the lateral collateral ligament and uh, it is comparatively mobile also the popliteus muscle sends few fibers uh, to lateral menisci and it pulls the menisci in more favorable position during sudden movement of knee joint so uh, now uh, to summarize the medial collateral ligament anterior cruciate ligament and menis uh, medial menisci these three structures are more prone to get injured and uh, now how do we investigate or diagnose the injuries of knee joint so there is nemo arthrography so air can be injected in the synovial cavity of the knee joint so that soft tissue can be studied and there is arthroscopy it involves introduction of lighted instrument into synovial cavity of the knee joint through a small incision and this technique permits direct visualization of structures such as cruciate ligaments menisci and it is of diagnostic purpose it is of terrible triad or unhappy triad it occurs due to violent blow on lateral surface of knee joint leading to its abduction and lateral rotation and the three important structures torn or injured in this uh, clinical condition are anterior cruciate ligament medial collateral ligament and medial menisci as discussed in earlier slide we know that the medial collateral ligament is more prone or it is more frequently injured compared to the lateral collateral ligament and the nature of injury is when there is forced abduction of tibia on femur it can result in partial tear of medial collateral ligament which can occur at its femoral or tibial attachment then the anterior cruciate ligament is more prone to get injured compared to posterior cruciate ligament examination of patient with ruptured anterior cruciate ligament shows that the tibia can be pulled excessively forwards on the femur it is known as anterior drawer test positive and in uh, menisci the medial meniscus is more prone to get injured so when the flex knee is forcefully abducted the medial menisci is pulled between medial condyle of the femur and tibia and the external rotation of condyles exert severe grinding forces and uh, thus see uh, the abduction and external rotation injuries cause bucket handle tear of medial meniscus and these three structures when injured the clinical condition is known as unhappy triad or terrible triad a patella can be fractured as a result of direct violence as in uh, accidents and it is broken into several small fragments because the bone lies within the quadriceps femoris tendon little separation of fragments occur and the close relation of patella to the overlying skin may result in fracture being open fracture of patella as a result of indirect violence uh, as caused by sudden contraction of quadriceps snapping the patella across front of femoral condyle the knee is in semi flexed position and the fracture line is transverse and the separated uh, fragments are 
often seen. Then the differential diagnosis of patellar fracture is bipartite patella. Occasionally, accessory ossification centers are present in the patella, and if they do not fuse, they, uh, then it is known as bipartite patella. So it is the unfused accessory ossification center and typically about in 75 percent cases it occurs in the superolateral aspect generally fractures are unilateral whereas uh, this condition bipartite patella is bilateral osteoarthritis is age related uh, condition so here the cartilage gets degenerated as we know in a synovial joint the articular surfaces are covered by articular cartilage and uh, as the age advances due to degeneration the articular cartilage is degenerated and it is characterized by growth of osteophytes at articular ends so small bony spurs will arise in uh, after the degeneration of articular cartilage which may restrict the movement so movement is limited and it is very painful and osteoarthritis may set in early age also at times uh, due to uh, underlying congenital deformities or fractures around the knee joint soleus muscle contains rich plexus of veins which are wall-less and these veins are of a nature of venous sinuses often termed as soleal sinuses superficial veins of leg example a saphenous vein drains into the soleal sinus through perforating veins and the soleal sinus empty segmentally into the deep veins of leg like posterior tibial and peroneal veins on standing the venous return of blood from leg depends largely on the muscular activity especially of soleus muscle when the soleus contracts the blood is pumped superiorly in the deep veins and for this reason soleus is also known as peripheral heart other peripheral heart is present in the head neck region so the lateral pterygoid muscle when it contracts it pumps the blood stagnant blood present in pterygoid venous plexus uh, during uh, the movement of yawning also the contraction occurs so it is also known as peripheral heart this vein is commonly used for venous section and coronary arterial bypass in venous section a small skin incision is taken anterior to medial malleolus then the saphenous vein is cut down and a small cannula is inserted for prolonged intravenous administration and in case of coronary artery bypass uh, also the great saphenous vein is preferred because it is readily accessible and we can see some structural deformities of the foot so uh, there when the arch of the foot is high the high arch foot is known as pes cavus and flat arch of the foot is known as pes planus so in pes planus there is absence or collapse of arches that lead to flat foot which may be congenital or acquired due to loss of uh, foot arch there is clumsy and shuffleness in the gait and there is lack of shock, uh, shock absorbing functions it makes the foot more liable to trauma and osteoarthritis then there is loss of concavity of the sole so it compresses the nerves and vessels of the sole and causes metatarsalgia then exaggeration of the longitudinal arch of foot is known as pes cavus it results due to contracture of plantar flexion at uh, transverse tarsal joint when dorsiflexion of metatarsal joint occurs due 
to uh, atrophy of lumbricals and introsia and there is plantar flexion of interphalangeal joint so these are again super aided by lumbricals and introsia and the condition is known as claw foot common cause of pes cavicis spina bifida and uh, poliomyelitis when the patient walks on toe with the heels raised it is known as talipus equinus when patient walks on heels with four foot raised it is known as talipus calcaneus when the patient walks on inner border of foot which is everted and abducted the condition is known as talipus valgus when patient walks on outer border of the foot which is inverted and adducted condition is known as talipus varus most common deformity of foot is talipus equinovarus or club foot in this condition the foot is inverted adducted plantar flexed and this condition is mostly associated with spina bifida there are two types of club foots talipus equinovulgus where the foot is dorsiflexed at ankle joint everted at mid tarsal joint and uh, in talipus equinovarus the foot is plantar flexed at ankle joint and inverted at the uh, mid tarsal joint in this slide we can see hallux vulgus and hallux varus hallux vulgus is a foot deformity caused by pressure from footwear and degenerative joint disease uh, where lateral deviation of great toe occurs so we can see in the first figure there is lateral deviation of great toe it is known as hallux vulgus it is painful it decreases the medial longitudinal arch it is common in old age and females and they cannot move the great toe away from second toe because the sesamoid under the head of first metatarsal are displaced in the space between the heads of first and second metatarsal the first metatarsal shifts medially and sesamoid shifts laterally pressure or friction against shoes Uh, then the subcutaneous tissue swelling tender inflamed bursa is uh, seen it is known as bunion so this bunion is also responsible for hallux vulgus it is a tender inflamed bursa then in the second figure we can see hallux varus it is uh, characterized by medial devi deviation of the great toe at metatarsophalangeal joint in this slide we can see some deformities of toe so first is hammer toe in this the proximal phalanx is permanently dorsiflexed it is hyper extended at metatarsophalangeal joint the middle phalanx plant uh, is also hyper extended uh, the plantar flexion is seen at proximal interphalangeal joint and the distal phalangeal joint is hyper extended in mallet toe again it is a fixed deformity of distal interphalangeal joint of toe here the distal interphalangeal joint is flexed in claw toe uh, deformity there is hyper extension at metatarsophalangeal joint whereas the proximal and distal interphalangeal joint are flexed these all deformities occur due to ill fitting footwear secondary to arthritis or due to some neurological conditions slide is of ruptured calcaneal tendon in people with calcaneal tendinitis injury is experienced during forceful plantar flexion with extended knee following calf pain sudden dorsiflexion of plantar flex foot in complete rupture a gap of 1 to 5 cm is palpated proximal 
to the calcaneal attachment. Muscle affected are gastrocnemius soleus and plantaris. It act. It is acute severe injury, and the person cannot plantar flex against resistance. Cannot raise heel. Cannot dorsiflex. Dorsiflexion is limited up to 20 degree. Movement is possible in lateral rotation. and then uh, bruising appears in malleolar region lump appears in calf due to shortening of triceps suri and surgical interventions are advised for active lifestyle atrial aneurysm is abnormal dilatation of popliteal artery it causes edema pain then palpable pulsations or thrills are there arterial sounds or bruits are detectable with stethoscope aneurysm may compress tibial nerve or vasa vasorum causing referred pain in skin overlying medial aspect of the calf ankle and foot injury to artery may cause hemorrhage and injury to both artery and vein results in arteriovenous fistula so the femoral artery is ligated in adductor canal so blood can bypass the occlusion through genicular anastomosis and reach popliteal artery distal to the ligation spinal lymph nodes are arranged in t manner so there is horizontal limb and vertical limb of lymph nodes and um, there are superficial inguinal lymph nodes they lie below the inguinal ligament and they are subdivided into inferior that is vertical limb of the t and superolateral superomedial lymph nodes uh, partly these are formed by the horizontal limb of the t shaped arrangement of lymph nodes superficial inguinal lymph nodes drain anal canal below the pectineal line and skin below umbilicus then the lower extremity uh, scrotum and vulva deep inguinal lymph nodes lie within the medial compartment of femoral canal in femoral sheath medial to the femoral vein and the uh, the deep inguinal lymph nodes receive drainage from glans penis or clitoris they are known as lymph nodes of rosenmuller or clockwit both superficial and deep inguinal lymph nodes drain into external iliac lymph nodes they are enlarged in athlete's foot fungal infection below toes then there is jaw cage that is fungal infection in groin vaginal or penile yeast infection by fungal candida then urinary tract infection cellulitis balanitis prostatitis cystitis sexually transmitted disease like genital herpes gonorrhea syphilis hiv and malignancies of uh, testis ovary or there can be lymphoma or leukemia in these conditions the lymph nodes inguinal lymph nodes are enlarged this slide there are two figures first figure is of metatarsal gia and second is of plantar fasciitis so metatarsal gia is a condition in which balls of the foot or metatarsals become painful and inflamed due to overuse and its causes are intense uh, training in runners or high impact sports with poor shoe fits then mortens neuroma is non cancerous growth of fibrous tissue around the nerve between third and fourth metatarsal head it again causes metatarsal stress then poorly fitting shoes high heels uh, transfer extra weight to the forefoot and then athlete shoes lacking padding then obesity excess weight there are some foot shapes like highly arched foot or flat foot that compresses the head of metatarsals then foot deformities like hammer toe bunions can cause uh, metatarsia yeah? and a stress fracture are the small breaks in metatarsals they also cause pain and metatarsalgia yeah? then like the second figure is of plantar fasciitis the inflammation of plantar fascia 
is caused by again overuse mechanism resulting from running high impact exercise inappropriate footwears um, it is common hind foot problem causing pain in foot and heels mainly there is pain in heel region pain is severe after sitting or initiating walking in the morning and it disappears 5 to 10 minutes after activity and reappears at rest there is point tenderness felt in proximal attachment of plantar fascia over the medial tubercle of calcaneum and pain aggravates at passive extension of great toe dorsiflexion of ankle or weight bearing and plantar fasciitis causes pain in uh, presence of calcaneal spur so it is very common clinical condition cos veins are tortuous dilated segments of veins associated with valvular incompetency they arise from incompetent valves which permit blood flow from deep venous system to superficial venous system at saphano femoral junction and saphano popliteal junction this results in venous hypertension and dilatation of superficial venous system in 98% the cause is primary idiopathic and other secondary causes include deep vein thrombosis then pelvic mass uterine fibroid ovarian mass or uh, there can be arteriovenous malformation and it is common in old age in females in uh, prolonged long standing obesity pregnancy there can be family history and clinically the patient presents with dilated tortuous veins uh, there is skin discoloration there is pain itching and if untreated there can be ulceration thrombophlebitis saphina varix mistaken for uh, femoral hernia and it is diagnosed by uh, duplex ultrasonography and it is treated by high saphenous ligation in varicose patients with concurrent deep vein thrombosis we cannot treat superficial incompetency as the venous blood will not uh have root no there is no root back in patient with deep vein incompetence so non surgical management is offered in such patients side is of deep vein thrombosis it is the clotting of blood in a deep vein of an extremity commonly calf thigh or pelvis deep vein thrombosis results from impaired venous return endothelial injury hypercoagulability and it causes pulmonary embolism femoral and popliteal veins in thigh then posterior tibial and peroneal veins in calves are most commonly affected lower extremity deep vein thrombosis mostly results from impaired venous return that is immobilized patient then endothelial injury in fracture leg hypercoagulability then upper extremity deep vein thrombosis results from endothelial injury due to uh, central venous catheter or pacemakers injections or part of superior vena cava obstruction deep vein thrombosis initiates in venous wall cusp and its complications common complications are chronic venous insufficiency then um, post phlebitic syndrome pulmonary embolism uh, then there is phlegmasia alba that is uh, during pregnancy leg turns milky white in patient with dvt and they may have dull aching pain tenderness edema erythema is there and homin sign is positive homin sign means the there is calf discomfort and it is elicited by ankle dorsiflexion with extended knee and it is diagnosed by the dvt is diagnosed by ultrasonography and d dimer venography and it is mostly treated by anticoagulants 
then ivc filters or thrombolytic drugs and at times surgery is needed